three questions you need to ask about the internet. One, is your internet limited? This is Jo. Jo is sad because her Wi-Fi is down, and as a result, her world has come to a temporary end. In this brief moment of despair, it occurs to Jo just how important the internet is, for empowering millions of people to reach out to others, communicate ideas, and even influence political change. Like most people, Jo largely experiences the internet through platforms owned by a handful of companies. So what does this mean? Facebook, for example, appears to be a platform that is largely influenced by the people that use it. And yet, it was recently revealed that Facebook's trending topics were being picked by Facebook staff. Mark Zuckerberg will have to answer today to leading conservatives as he tries to bat down allegations that Facebook employees manipulated user data to routinely suppress news stories of interest to conservative readers. Look, what Facebook purports to be is uh, uh, have all of its content be driven by its users. What it turns out from this Gizmodo story that broke last week is that there's actually somebody behind the curtain putting their fingers on the scales. Facebook denied political bias, but have now modified how trending topics are selected. So what does it mean to have people picking what they decide is important for you to see online? Jo realises there are limits on what you can share on social media. She knows that posts supporting ISIS are frequently taken down by major internet platforms, and she read about new mothers complaining that their breastfeeding pictures have been taken down. But it's much broader than that. One look at onlinecensorship.org will show you numerous examples of content that has been controversially taken down from social media. Likewise, Jo is limited by what she can use on her iPhone. Apple has a set of rules which guides what can be posted on its App Store, one of which is objectionable content. Various apps have been rejected from the store, including apps by cartoonists, game makers, and even a journalist highlighting the use of drone strikes by the US in the Middle East. I can't believe that Apple would pull these apps when it's not doing anything wrong. The only thing it's doing is providing people with information. Are we supposed to keep our head in the sand and not know about these things? Jo wonders who else is deciding what she can't see online. Of course, at school they had loads of filters on computers, but now she's an adult, surely she gets to make those decisions for herself. So if you buy a mobile phone, pornography is by default filtered out, it's blocked in most cases. In order to get that content, you have to switch the filters off. And the same now goes for Sky and Talk Talk. It's not just pornography, actually. Things like extreme political views, self-harm, or alcohol. And sometimes it's just about the keywords um, being associated with things that are actually nothing to do uh, with the content of a website. So does that mean that a website discussing sexual health could get blocked because it would have keywords like sex. If you've got state censorship, sure this happens and you get random sites blocked in those systems, but in Western democracies, absolutely not. The UK is pretty much the only country that does this. Actually, I've been trying to disable mine and, and it's been really, really difficult to do because uh, I was trying to look at a picture, uh, I don't know if you know of an artist who drew Trump with a miniature penis. And I was just trying to look at the picture and it's like, no, you can't see it because it's adult content. It's like, uh, who are you to say that I'm not allowed to see this? I'm an adult, it's art. They should have asked me for it for, before, but they didn't. Okay, but we do need to keep people safe, right? I mean, Joe doesn't want, say, her little brother finding bad stuff online. If you've told adults that the internet is safe because we've switched the filters on and now you can let the kids go roam the internet, you have a problem because these filters are going to be really not that tough. It isn't even going to be true that all the pornography is blocked. So, you know, you need to do a bit more than relying on filters. So I think we're kind of sending the wrong signal here. Jo is confused. She thought the internet was a tool that facilitated her and gave her a voice. And now she's wondering who's in control. There's a small number of companies that shape how Jo uses the internet. And there seems to be a conflict between Joe's freedom in using the internet and what's in the interest of these companies. And she shares everything about herself online. The internet remembers more about Joe than she does about herself. For example, Joe, what were you searching at 4am on Monday? So what happens with all this data? Whistleblowing happens every day. 
The chances are, behind the most damning scandals you've heard about in the media, it was a whistleblower who raised the alarm in the first place.